the evolution and decentralized symbiotic alignment this is an odd one for you today so basically the paper i wrote a while ago it's not like written written it's like a very early draft much of the parts are not filled out at all um it's what it sounds like i'm creating this big weird meta math theory that kind of encapsulates evolution and intelligence basically what like meta optimization this title should be changed actually but whatever meta optimization it's like an encapsulating idea of intelligence and anti-entropy and um, evolution and a bunch of different things all in one like a, a grandiose theory of everything in terms of like optimizers basically um, uh, and implications for AI and alignments and whatever um, nowhere near finished basically like a crazy off the speed rough draft what I wanted to show this paper for because is I have a bunch of papers like these that are just not finished um, that are just haphazardly like lots of stuff put into it like many pages of drafts but they're not not finished at all um, and part of the um, open source my life project where I'm open sourcing everything I do basically um, is I posted all of them all these unfinished papers um, along with um, for, so I've got my next concept predictor I've got defining what understanding means and stuff with patents and AI and like um, my um, old sensation perception experiments I have a bunch of stuff um, old papers that were just for classes honestly I want to post because just because why not um, and this list will grow I have many more to post this list but like basically there are GitHub repos that contain, um, let's, let's use this one for example, that contain at minimum a read me explaining this is a man research paper and the PDF and um, the actual latex files, right? So if you want to check those out, go ahead if you, you're curious. But anyway, let's get into this paper itself. Um, so what is the table concept right here? I have not highlighted anything. We're going through just blind, basically. I haven't touched this paper and I want to say since maybe August or so. Um, but so meta optimization, we're going through like function spaces, optimization algorithms, we're defining qualities of them and how they propagate through time, stuff so with entropy and everything. Then we're going through, oh, the challenges of taming the beast. This is a whole alignment paper basically in itself. This should be a whole separate thing. Um, and then I began an economic model of um, this type of symbiotic interdependence I wanted to talk about with AI and humans. Um, nowhere near usable really. And then um, I was going to get into a whole... Um, blockchain stuff again should be a separate paper. These ch these sections basically types of papers. This this paper was getting way too like too big, too um too out of hands. So this itself is one paper basically. This itself is a different paper. Um, and they're both pretty filled out. And the rest of these are not filled out at all basically. So let's just get to the first one though. Um, meta optimization. So let's read this first pa paragraph, kind of like an abstract, I guess. Evolution is evolving, or to restate more broadly, optimization algorithms optimize and will keep optimizing, and the specific optimization algorithm being used is also something that changes over time according to this universal Darwinism style universal optimization. Evolution is a specific optimization algorithm that utilizes large populations with variation and selection pressure relative to the environment of the thing being optimized. I will define a larger class of optimization algorithms that evolution acts as only a subset of, and then posit the truism that optimization algorithms optimize. Add in the idea that optimization algorithms can create optimization algorithms, both as subcomponents and as successors, and I think that it should be clear how this idea begins to look, bro to look broader than evolution. The example of subcomponents would include how evolution created the optimization algorithm in my brain that helps me learn how to surf or do whatever human stuff we do. The first example of successors would be how evolution with asexual reproduction gave way to evolution with sexual reproduction as a method that encourages smarter variation. The other example of successors would be how evolution might be about to give way to gradient descent and algorithms that are deriv derivations of it, such as Adam, if AI takes over. Below, I define a mathematical model that describes the progression from one optimization algorithm to the next as a meta-optimization algorithm itself, and hopefully a kind of fundamental mathematical truth. Okay, we're going to just be reading in depth, I think. This is all pretty interesting, that I, for what I can remember. Um, so we propose a Lipschitz continuous. That's just a specific math term that means like the, the curves are all smooth, basically. Um, that's not quite right, but whatever. Um, infinite dimensional space of all possible information, F with a landscape defined by a function L mapping F onto R, the real numbers, which is a single scalar, that maps points in F, aka potential solutions, to real numbers, aka the height, fitness, or quality of those solutions. Um, so for example, uh, evolution maps a genome onto a probability that you will survive, right? Or um, 
AI models, we map our parameters onto uh, the loss function of because it be loss or whatever, whatever loss function you're using, right? In the context of machine learning, this is often referred to as the hypothesis space, or um, there's other other names for it too. I was using this one at the time, but there's other names for it: the um, optimization space, the um, function space, whatever it is. In the con and in the context of evolution, it could be thought of as the space of all possible genotypes mapped to their fitness. Gradient descent involves a single point, or a batch of points in the case of batch gradient descent, moving deterministically down the steepest slope. Evolution involves a population exploring the landscape and probabilistically moving towards areas of higher fitness. We then define an optimization algorithm as a function A mapping F to F, uh, mapping points in F to other points in F. The goal of A would be to find points F, or lowercase f, such that L of F is minimized or maximized depending on the problem such viewpoint. We then define a meta-optimization process as a function M mapping A on to A. Um, which maps optimization algorithms to other optimization algorithms with the goal of improving their performance according to some metric. Each opt optimization algorithm A at a given time t is characterized by four parameters, the number of agents n, the stochasticity of the agent's movements s, the speed of movement, movement v, the generality of the agent's intelligence g, and the reproduction capability r, which governs the probability of spawning a new algorithm number of agents. In population-based optimization algorithms such as genetic algorithms, particle swarm optimization, and differential evolution, the population size is a key parameter that controls the exploration-exploitation trade-off. A larger population size can lead to more exploration of the search space, potentially enabling the algorithm to escape from local optima and find better solutions. In contrast, gradient descent and its variants, being single-point methods, are more prone to getting stuck in local minima, especially in problems with non-convex optimization landscapes. I will point out that in especially high-dimensional scenarios, we now know that um, local minima are not only an issue, the bigger issue that I've learned about since then is um, saddle points, but whatever. However, they tend to converge faster to a local minimum than population-based methods. Formally, you might define a measure n of a that gives the number of agents used by an optimization algorithm a. You could then hypothesize that for a given problem with a rugged, i.e. multimodal landscape. Why did I say i.e. multimodal? I don't know. For a given problem with a rugged optimization landscape, there is a positive correlation between n a and the quality of the solution found as measured by the fitness function l. So evolution right we have to use many different spe many different um, organisms in the species for it to work you can't just have like evolution work with one organism mutating like one at a time and like asexual reproduction you actually need to have a lot of trials basically so you can do trial and error right similarly um, I mean current AI models we don't have that like but although we can kind of do those so evolutionary algorithms are one way we actually do make a bunch of variations of models but also just like when you train a model and you um, begin it from multiple different initialization points from multiple different starting places with um, how you uh, initialize your parameters you're effectively doing that you're, you're trying out multiple agents it's just your um, each one of those starting points is a different one effectively to prove this you would need to make some assumptions about the nature of the landscape and the behavior of the algorithms for example you might assume that the landscape has a certain number of local optima distributed according to some probability distribution that each agent is an algorithm has a certain probability of escaping from local optimum. Um, yeah, again, we need to ignore the local optimum stuff. So that's kind of boring. Um, I'm going to skip the rest of that. Stochasticity. Um, so I, I define this in terms of the ideal is gradient descent, but I need to redo that and define it in terms of the ideal as an actual straight shot to the global minimum. But anyways, let's just read it anyways. For stochasticity, we define a measure S on A that captures the extent to which the movements of an algorithm A deviate from the direction of the gradient, um, what's, that, what's that called, nabla? Yeah, the big one. Uh, this could be measured by the angle between the gradient and the actual movement. So S of A, I chose for example just the, the angle here, so arc cosine. Um, we dot product up here, so this is cosine similarity inside of here, and then arc cosine of that gives us the angle, um, absolute value it. Um, think about this as like, in this definition, although I should have defined it differently, but in this definition it's like, okay, for any optimization algorithm on a, like a landscape, like, so we have hills and valleys and like an agent on the landscape, the best thing it can do is follow the gradient down, right? That's the most optimal thing, um, that direction towards the, lo the local minimum, right? Um, and this basically says that whatever directions the algorithm actually moves that are not quite um, 
straight down. Uh, that is its stochasticity. Um, so, for example, we use mini batch, batch, whatever, stochastic gradient descent in, in terms rather than gradient descent because then we don't like even just like. I'm not gonna get into that actually. I'm looking into that, but um, I should have redefined this in terms of if there is an actual straight line from the current points to the actual global optimum, and I should have defined this all in terms of that, and that would be an unknown value. Um, that would be better rather than defining it with um, gradient descent being the theoretical best one because I don't think gradient descent is the best one. Like for example, like we already know like second order derivatives help kind of thing, right? Where M uh, is the movement vector of the algorithm and G is the gradient vector. So we're dot producting them, right? A perfectly deterministic algorithm like gradient descent would have S on A equals zero, while a random algorithm would have S on A equals 90 degrees. The arc cosine function gives the angle between the two vectors and the absolute value ensures that we don't differentiate between left and right of the gradient. Speed, time can be incorporated into the model as a parameter t that indexes the state of the optimization process at a, each point in time. For each t, the optimization algorithm at is applied to the function space f to generate a new solution. Over time, a of t evolves under the optimization process m to become a more effective optimizer. The speed of movement of learning or learning rate is a key hyperparameter in many optimization algorithms, and it controls how much the solution changes in each step. A measure V on A could be defined that gives the average speed of an algorithm A with formula. I just define total average, whatever. I guess this is average speed right there. Um, evolution is slower compared to some like gradient descent. A reproduction mechanism. This game gets interesting. Uh, this can be represented as a stochastic process where for each point xi visited by algorithm A in the function space f, there's a probability p governed by r, uh, r being a hyperparameter, I think, or a parameter, that a new algorithm A prime is generated at that point. The new algorithm could inherit characteristics from its parent algorithm, but with some variation. For example, humans created gradient descent, which is likely a very different mechanism from our own learning method, and almost certainly the most drastic level of parent-offspring distance between algorithms to have occurred since evolution created the human mind. Let's denote A of t uh, is a set of the optimization algorithms active at time t. For each algorithm AI, for each point x it visits in the function space, there's a probability p that it generates a new algorithm AI prime, which is added to the set of activation algorithms. So. Um, a uh, is a delta time, right? Um, and then we, so we union the previous set of algorithms with this new AI prime. Uh, and then here, delta t represents a small increment of time, and the union operator represents the addition of new algorithms to the set, whatever. Um, the new algorithm AI prime can be defined as a variation of its parent algorithm AI with changes to its characteristics N, S, V, and G. Now, generally, the generality is the interesting thing, I think. So some optimization algorithms, like stochastic gradient descent or genetic algorithms, are quite general in their potential applications, while others are more specialized. The looming question in the AI field has had to do with whether we will be able to one day create an artificial general, general intelligence, AGI, and recent developments are going make, uh, make it seem inevitable. I'm not talking very well, sorry. When attempting to construct a definition of generality, one must first address the open question of whether the emergence of AGI will be sudden or gradual. Some believe there might be a hard takeoff scenario where a system rapidly self-improves to superintelligence once it reaches a certain threshold of capabilities. Others propose a soft takeoff scenario where progress is more gradual. The soft scenario seems ob obviously safer since we would have more time to focus on aligning each successive version. To adjust each possibility, our model will now split into two, one in which generality is a binary variable and the other in for which it exists upon a spectrum. The binary model could simplify the analysis and provide a clear-cut view of the implications of being general versus not general. The scalar model, on the other hand, could capture the nuanced reality that most algorithms have some degree of generality, but vary in how broadly they can be applied. While the spectrum model could mirror either a hard hard or soft takeoff possibilities, the binary case should only be interpreted as a potential model of hard takeoff. The two methods for introduction of generality into the model and corresponding definition of generality are as follows. In the binary case, for each algorithm A, assign a generality value G that is either zero, not general, or one, general. Algorithms that are specific are incapable of spawning other algorithms. Algorithms that are general are capable of spawning both general and non-general algorithms represented by PG and PS, respectively. So probability of spawning a general one, probability of spawning a um, specific one. 
the former of which has a far smaller probability, so PG is much less than PS. In the scalar case for each optimization algorithm A, assign a generality value G that could be any value between 0 and 1. Offspring spawn according to a beta distribution with beta much larger than A. As the parent algorithm's value of G increases, beta in decreases and A increases. But it is still true that beta is much greater than A. Um, beta distribution, sorry, it's just like an unequal curve. Where's the camera? An unequal curve, like a whatever. Um, good for um, very lopsided distributions. Uh, this means that any given offspring algorithm has an overwhelming chance of being very specific. Propagation of optimization algorithms over time. Less the notes, um, was this a phi or I, I can't do the letters, I'm so bad at those. Phi of A of T and T as the propagation of optimization algorithm A within the function space F at time T. It could be defined in several ways, such as the volume of function space covered, the improvement in fitness achieved, or a combination of both. Here we will say it is determined by a combination of the average fitness of the solutions found by the algorithm, the dispersion of these solutions in the function space, and the effectiveness of the reproduction mechanism. So if this function ends up being beta times... Should I be using a beta here, if I already use beta up here, I don't think I should be, this should not be a beta, this should be a different parameter name, but whatever. Um, beta times average fitness, plus one minus beta times dispersion, plus gamma times reproduction, is that what you wanted to do? Whatever. Where beta and gamma are parameters that balance the importance of fitness, dispersion, and reproduction. To measure the propagation of an optimization algorithm within the function space, we will utilize the Euclidean distance, a simple intuitive measure. This would quantify the spread of an algorithm in the function space over time. Given a set of points x, um, x1, x2, yada, yada, in the function space F, where each point represents a solution found by the optimization algorithm. We could define the average distance D of these points from the origin as, again, just Euclidean distance right there, where xi dot xi denotes the dot product of xi with itself, which gives the square of its Euclidean norm or length. Did I mean to do xi times xj or something? I don't know. The, root, the square root of the sum then gives the Euclidean distance. The standard deviation of these distances could then be calculated to measure the dispersion of the solutions found by the algorithm. So to be clear, all this math should be making no sense. It really shouldn't be. Um, it's so haphazard and random and like piece of my ChatGPT and stuff. Like I, I can, if I were to put like a lot of work into this, I could make it actually make some sense. Um, but I think there are, I've so far spotted multiple flaws in how I'm constructing all this. So don't be surprised if it's kind of wacky. Uh, the exploration and exploitation trade-off is a complex issue that can't be fully captured by a single parameter. However, for the sake of simplicity, we'll introduce a parameter beta, yeah, yeah, yeah. Meta-optimization, right? Under this model meta-optimization process, M has to optimize five characteristics, N, S, V, G, and R. With this setup, the meta, the meta process M can be defined as a function that selects the optimization algorithm A that maximizes the propagation phi of a of t of t over a given time period. So M is selecting the algorithm to choose that will optimize that phi, how good it actually is. This definition captures the idea that the best optimization algorithm is the one that most effectively propagates itself within the function space over time. This model captures the idea of evolution of evolution or meta-optimization, where optimization algorithms themselves are subject to optimization and evolution. However, it should be noted that the model has a highly simplified and abstract and many details of the model is highly simplified and abstract, and many details of real-world optimization and evolutionary processes may not be captured by it. A mission, a mission of the model, I'm going to skip through those. Much like stuff I, did, I didn't include that I could have, that I probably should. Implications, um, I'm not going to get super into this. It's a bunch of random implications, part maybe part, part not. I think I'm going to call the video there and do this as a different video, because I think this is pretty interesting, actually. Um, this other, it's my like thoughts on alignment at, at the time anyways, so yeah. Um, again, check out my um, GitHub to read this yourself and to read all the papers that I posted that are like 11 of them or so. I have probably dozens in total. I just need to find them. Um, but these are the ones that were like on Overleaf, basically. Um, so I can easily post them GitHub, basically. Um, so yeah, like, subscribe, all that stuff, following the journey. Uh, yeah, end of video.